Heads up everybody, my name is Sentinel Gray and welcome to the channel. Now listen, I have already put out two videos with the help of my friend Revenant to give you guys guides on day one and week one raid prep. Um, it would be foolish of me to put those guides out and basically show you that I wasn't following them myself, so I'm going to so show you my Titan here, my wonderful, wonderful, beautiful Titan and everything that I am taking into day one. <clears throat> so, my team is going for a day one completion. We are not going for worlds first. We want the emblem and a bunch of other reasons why we want to do a day one because really none of us have really done a day one clear, so we're going to go for it. The only thing that is not going to be changing is my armor. Unless there is a dire situation to where we need a certain exotic from me, this, the armor that you see that I have is what is going to basically happen. All of my stats and everything are going to stay the same, should be. So everything you see here is what I am basically going to walk into the Deepstone Crypt with. Starting with the most obvious thing though, or the mo one of the most important things, my subclass. I'm going to be Code of the Commander. For those of you who have not watched my Sentinel crowd control build, I will have a description or I will have a link in the description box below. Please go see that because I do believe it is one of the top, top most crowd control builds in the entire game. And you don't need any mods or anything like that. You just need two exotics. So <clears throat> go to the commander just really fast. Tactical strike. You punch an enemy. They die, whether it's by a punch or by gunfire or whatever. Causes a void explosion. Control demolition. Hit a target with a void ability to attach a void detonator. For the hits, cause the detonator to explode, dealing damage to surrounding targets. Ship blows up. Basically, whenever you hit him with a melee, you apply a detonator, and whenever you kill the enemy, the detonator explodes. Or if you deal damage enough to make the detonator explode before they die, that does the same thing. Last and most important thing, resupply. You and nearby allies regain health as well as grenade and melee energy when your void detonators explode. Because Bungie seems to be going forward with a crowd control element with stasis and all of the enemies that they've been showcasing in an area this thing is going to be extremely important if bungie doesn't nerf it with the next big patch that comes out this is going to be extremely useful <clears throat> it is going to keep myself alive as well as my teammates as well as give us grenade and melee energy which is just it's important everybody knows that it's regardless of who you are regardless of what your build is you're never going to turn down free grenade or melee energy banner shield granted no it is not a bubble however this is still going to come in handy if there is ever a time to where i need to res somebody and i am taking fire or they just happen to be caught out of position if they are out in the open somewhere i can pop my banner shield and res them and everything will be perfectly fine anything that comes into the banner shield or touches it gets a detonator placed on them which causes the explosion and go back to resupply that is a quick very quick summary of the code of the commander now as far as armor, this is what I'm going to be wearing. I have things such as Radiant Light for a strength stat boost. That's why I have 108 total on my armor. That's why I have 35 strength on my legs in general. My arms, my gauntlets, same thing. Powerful friends, increased mobility. If you want extra mods to bump up your stats a little bit, Powerful Friends and Radiant Light are going to be awesome for that because of the bonuses they give you. Hopefully they'll give us more bonuses for the other stats, but we will have to see. Heart of Inmost Light goes hand in hand with Code of the Commander. So if Code of the Commander, if I use anything from Code of the Commander, this ability procs. Using an ability, any of them, grenade, melee, or barricade, empowers the other two abilities. Empowered means abilities have faster regen, melees and grenades do more damage, and barricades have more hit points. So the more stuff blows up, it, it just feeds in. A lot of this is I will pop up a barricade and then just have my grenade and melee just regen much, much more quickly and do more damage, and it's great. 
pairing along with that, this this right here, this whole entire the the code of the commander, heart of inmost light, and Monte Carlo is the exact crowd control build of which I'm talking about. The description will be or the uh, video for it will be down in the description box below. I'm sorry, I notice I'm going a little fast. I would try and slow it down, but I do not want this to be another half hour long video. Monte Carlo. Yes, I understand. 600 RPM auto rifles are getting the nerf. They're not getting that big of a nerf though, so I do believe Monte Carlo is still going to be a viable option for me. Not only because of the damage it does regularly, but because it also has Markov Chain, which is a, <clears throat> a version of Swashbuckler, and uh, Grave Robber. It's two and one, basically. And the Monte Carlo method being dealing damage with this weapon reduces your melee cooldown and grants a chance at fully charging your melee with each ability kill as long as bungie does not nerf this gun this is going to work in that crowd control build beautifully it is going to be wonderful and this is what i'm this, this is what i'm bringing in other kinetic weapons that i'm bringing in hawthorne's field forge shotgun with grave robber and one two punch Long Shadow with Snapshot Sights, Moving Target. It is basically, this gun is, I know this is like the PvP gun, but I use this build or use this gun a lot in PvE just to be able to hit targets while on the move. I can jump up, do run around, do whatever I need to do with Long Shadow and be perfectly okay with hitting my targets. My Night Watch. This is not the Night Watch that I want, and I am still try striving to get my perfect Night Watch. However, big thing about this, rapid hit and explosive payload. Because the contest modifier is going to happen on day one, rapid hit is going to be very important because then I am not basically leaning on the probability of me killing an enemy, especially with a critical like Outlaw. Outlaw is going to be fine. Outlaw is going to be buffed, but Outlaw depends on you getting a kill. Rapid hit does not. So I can keep on hitting major targets with rapid hit and explosive payload, getting critical damage and explosive payload damage on a target and still reload just as quickly without killing an enemy. That it's, it's really, really nice. It is also the same reason as to why I have Sacred Providence. Sacred Providence is the same thing to where Rapid Hit, Kill Clip. I really, really, really love Sacred Providence with Rapid Hit on it. It is super good. Still Feather Repeater. I have kept mine. My Still Feather Repeater is Feeding Frenzy and Swashbuckler. I have another one that is Grave, Wa Grave Robber and Swashbuckler, but I'm bringing this one with me on my, my excursion because if I am going to be the crowd control person in my in my raid group i'm probably going to kill a lot of ads or small enemies and feeding frenzy is actually probably going to proc for me <clears throat> outbreak perfected outbreak's just going to be important in case there is a time to where if you break off if the raid team has to break off in three teams of two outbreak is going to be good in case one of the three teams of two has to deal damage to a major enemy Granted, yes, other weapons will work as well, but Outbreak Perfected having the ability to stack its damage over a long period of time and have it being self-buffing is actually just really, really nice. I don't think anybody should skip over this weapon. I honestly think you should consider it. As far as energy weapons go, Python. I love this thing. I love it. It's one of my most favorite guns in the game right now, and it sucks that it's going away after next season. And from the testing that I have done, it outputs the most damage in the game right now with one, two punch. Any other shotgun that you can get one, two punch on, this outperforms it just by the pellet damage alone. Um, I've tried it with, I've tried it with uh, the Crown of Sorrows shotgun. I've tried it with the Garden of Salvation shotgun. All of them that have one, two punch, I have tried it and Python does the most damage uh, overall. The Icolo Sniper Rifle, the new one. I have fourth times the charm and high impact reserves. I also got the uh, Reload Speed Masterwork. This is going to be good for in case I have to do small uh, major damage. So if there's like a Gold Bar Knight that we have to kill or a Gold Bar Captain or whatever, this is going to be my go-to. Gnawing Hunger, just because it's Gnawing Hunger. It's really good right now. Yes, like I said, 60 or 600 RPM auto rifles are getting nerfed but 
I mean, it's it's good. Like gnawing hunger is good in general. Plus, whenever you have perk combinations like Zen moment, multi kill clip, and then like whenever you have the combinations that you can get on a gnawing hunger, it's it's better to take one and not need it than need it and not have it. Continuing down the line, trophy hunter. <clears throat> I was lucky to get this to drop back in uh, back in Saint 14 season. For some reason, I cannot remember the season for the life of me. Um, with this thing, I, it's for boss DPS. Whenever there, whenever I go and do uh, Scourge of the Past, I use this and Whisper. Um, so in case there is a time to where I may need a different weapon other than an exotic for a for boss DPS, or if I don't get enough heavy ammo from something like Zeno or yeah, something like Xenophage, I can switch to the trophy hunter and then still do really, really solid boss DPS on with it. Ariana's Val. Not only is it good in Grandmaster Nightfalls, but it also comes with the it comes with barrier rounds, anti-barrier rounds. <clears throat> And with the catalyst having nine rounds in the mag and making it essentially have auto loading holster, it's really, really good. So if we need any anti-barrier rounds ever in the raid, this is probably going to be my go-to unless something else happens. The Iclo shotgun. I have mine with feeding frenzy and trench barrel. I don't know how it's going to perform as far as paired up against Python. I don't think it's going to perform as well. The tests that I've ran so far, this performs okay. Because Trench Barrel, you get one punch and three shots. So you get four basically damage ticks or whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, damage inputs with this shotgun as opposed to the two with this. It's... It's going to be situational. If we run across anything that has a solar shield that I need this stuff for, I uh, will probably use the shotgun. But for right now, it's like in a holding pattern. I'm not guaranteeing I'm going to use it. Four heavies. I have an interference six with clown cartridge, full court, and spike grenades. And this is going to be good for my major stuff. Anything that I have to do with majors or if grenade launchers seem to be the thing to deal boss damage in this raid. This is going to be it. This is going to be mine. <clears throat> I have I have a Swarm of the Ravens, but it does not have uh, Clown Cartridge or Full Court. So I'm going to be using Interference. And if I have to, I will plug this Interference into my Swarm of the Ravens if it does that much difference in damage. Line in the Sand. Once again, I, I was lucky to get this from the Saint-14 season. Comes with Rapid Hit and Firing Line. <clears throat> Granted, yes... As of right now, linear fusion rifles do not do a ton of damage. They just don't. There's they're they're up there, don't get me wrong, but they're not they're not the thing. They're not king of damage. If they get a buff, maybe. Similar to what I said in the uh, the day one weapon prep video. It they're good, don't get me wrong, but they need a buff to really be on top. Xenophage for almost obvious reasons because Xenophage is what every single team that I've ever ran with doing garden uses. We use Xenophage. If you can weaken the target so that any round of Xenophage is considered a crit dealing extra damage, Xenophage is probably going to be it. Not only that, if I have Xenophage on and if there are tough enemies that I have to kill and I have to swap out my Monte Carlo for Xenophage for tough enemies, so be it, because Xenophage is really good at clearing major enemies as well. Fallen Guillotine. Highest DPS sword, even with the nerf that it's getting. Bungie said they still want it to be the higher DPS, uh, higher DPS frame, so it's still worth bringing into the raid, especially if we're going to have a situation to where it's like Riven and we have a big, huge stationary target. If we have a big, huge stationary target, and all we have to do is weaken it and walk up to it and use a sword, this is going to be good. This is going to be very solid and just a very good option for that type of stuff. Not only that, but you can also use this as a crowd control sword as well if you need to kill majors faster or whatever. Like, there's, there's no reason not to bring a falling guillotine into the raid. 
Whisper the Worm. Still, I do believe is the highest damage crit hitting weapon in the game. It's going to be worth bringing in regardless if the boss has a easy crit spot. Um, even if the even if it's not an easy crit spot, <clears throat> if it's just a crit spot in general, it's going to be worth having just to give it a shot, just to see where you go with Whisper. Um, in fact, probably what my team's going to do is we're probably all going to do the whole everybody have a different weapon, different damage dealing weapon, and then probably wipe to see who did the most damage and then go from there. Um, and then finally, Komodo, because no distractions and box breathing is very, very, very good for DPS type things. Um, you can use this with not only majors and stuff, but you can actually use this with bosses too. Um, I do believe there is a, uh, a QA tester at Bungie that loves Komodo for boss damage. Don't know why, but they do. Um, if fusion rifle, if linear fusion rifles get a buff, like I said, Komodo is going to be your best option because you can't get a line in the sand anymore. Komodo is going to be it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my whole entire kit for the raid. Like I said, all this stuff, like you see, I have all these items with me and everything like that. And this is like, <clears throat> this is just so I don't have to put stuff in my vault for right now. But everything that I've shown you, there is a reason why I am bringing everything that I have right now in with the raid. And like I said, I think the thing that's going to be probably invaluable to not only myself, but also my teammates is my crowd control build. Um, granted, yes, 600 RPMs are getting a nerf. I don't think it's going to matter that much. We'll have to really see, but I'll go from there. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys get some ideas on what you may want to use out of this or understand that I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass by these weapon videos or whatever, that I'm actually using what I'm telling you to use. <laughs> so thank you guys once again. I really do appreciate it. If you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to. And if you like live content, please be sure to, uh, to tune into my Twitch channel every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will have the link for that in the description box below. Thank you guys once again. I really do appreciate it. Remember, keep your heads up and be kind to each other. Bye now.